Sounds um, very similar to my son. He had yeah. very similar behavior problems. In fact, he ended up in a uh, – he was in like an – I'm trying to remember, but like an ABA program. Mm-hmm. Just It was just for his behavior. It wasn't – it was with a more impaired kid. Um, mm-hmm. He was so off the wall that, that in the district, didn't, they didn't know what to do with him. And I didn't, you know, wasn't at the point then when I could advocate for another placement, which probably would have been the best option. But so mm-hmm. they were like trying to put together some kind of program and it just was a comedy of errors and not yeah. necessarily errors, just not really knowing, not knowing how to right. manage it. So, you know, mm-hmm. it's not like I want to blame anybody, but I would have done it differently in retrospect. Not that I, you know, you can live with those kinds of can't change right. anything but when I hear you talking about it just brings me right back to going to well, and school all the time I mean throwing books at the teacher's head and you know just really right. crazy stuff yeah yeah so how's she doing how has it been has the behavior improved or is that still the main the main manifestation of the TSC that you're dealing with yeah I mean at times it's I feel like this last year or two has definitely been behaviorally the best that we've had from her. This last year, though, has been a little harder because procedures have started to pick up. Um, and we're, uh. we're in the process of doing potentially more surgery. Um, we've done all of the pre-op workups and testing and everything. And, you know, that's one of the things we've learned is that they've done enough therapy with her. She's been in school long enough. She understands what's expected of her. And she understands her routine and she usually can go along with that okay and be fairly compliant on those things and do a little bit of issue with transitioning in and out of when school gets over and dropping off and all of that, Mm -hmm. but not meltdowns, just kind of like she'll just sit there and not want to go. Mm -hmm. Um, And we just learned you got to keep her moving, right? Like if you find a bench, she's going to sit down and she'll sit there for an hour. You just got to keep going. Don't give her a chance to think about the fact that she's going to school. Oh, exactly. (laughs) The more thinking and, um, that goes into it, the worse it gets. So it's like, just keep her moving, keep her moving. And yeah. we, and that has worked pretty well. And honestly, I'm so proud of her because even as she's had to do more medical tests and things like that, um, with her being on Evelina, she has to have blood work done right. that she didn't have to have for years just being on Vigabitrin. And she will now, she doesn't like it. And we've explained to her, it's okay to cry. It's mm-hmm. not okay to hit and kick doctors. And these are the reasons why you have to get this done. And you'll have to talk to her for a bit, but then she will sit there and give them her arm. She um, because understands. she's gotten to the point, she's too big to pin her down, kicking and screaming to do these things that she doesn't uh, like. Yeah, yeah. What's a you challenge know, for us because my son's really strong and he, he fought a lot of blood tests. Right. And so, and she just, this past, when, you know, over Christmas, had a functional MRI and a PET scan unsedated and sat still for the entire thing. And wow. Yeah, whereas before, just getting her blood pressure taken or doing an ultrasound because she didn't like the feeling of the ultrasound gel would be a screaming match, right? So she has, like, really made huge gains, and I'm really proud of her in that. Yeah, but sure. the issue that we have is if there's seizure activity going on, especially if there's a big one coming up because every couple of months she's been having a status seizure. Oh, those are the um, worst. And days even, a week even, before it happens, her behavior will kind of start deteriorating. And really? she'll just be more combative. Nothing like she can super feel it extreme. coming. Yeah, she's just very irritable and unwilling to cooperate and just kind of, I'm going to do my own thing and leave me alone. And um, you can kind of tell that something is on the horizon just because her behavior starts getting worse. And then she'll have either a seizure or an aura. We'll treat the aura with rescue meds to prevent it from generalizing. And what kind of aura does she have? Just out of curiosity. um, She actually says that, and this has happened for a while, she would start by saying that her mouth or different parts of her body were shocky. And now she'll say that they hurt. But at the time, like this was several years ago, she would say they were shocky. And we didn't really know what that meant until we started seeing this pattern of like this would start and then maybe a half hour later or even a few minutes later she would have a tonic clonic seizure that would generalize and go status. And uh-huh. so we started with the help of her neurologist realizing this pattern. And so when she says she's shocking, we treat that with rescue med, hoping to like stop it before it has a chance to uh-huh. get big. Yep. And that usually usually works. Good. And then if we if we have enough of a warning with it, because there's not always an aura, but when there is, that's usually how we get it stopped. Mm-hmm. And um, 
after that kind of settles and she comes down off of the rescue meds and that gets out of her system and all of that passes, usually we have a very pleasant child again. <laughs> you know, it's, yeah. it's, it's just like it builds and builds and builds and she just gets really irritable with it and everything. Uh-huh. And then it gets dealt with one way or the other, whether she has a seizure and we end up in the ER or I treat it with rescue meds and nothing happens or whatever. And then after the fact, we kind of hit a baseline again. Huh. Yeah, I can relate in some ways. I don't know whether, yeah, various of mine have had status and I'm trying to remember whether it, what their behavior was like after it, other than being really tired for a long time. Oh yeah, for sure, for sure tired. But then once that kind of like recuperation phase is over, Mm -hmm. right, then, and when we treat the aura, usually it doesn't get to that point of tiredness long term because she doesn't really end up having the big seizure usually. But there will still be the process of, like, getting that benzodiazepine out of her system. Yeah. All right? So that's yeah. not always a super pleasant, fun time. She's weepy. And, but then once I get that out of her system, then She's back. we're usually kind of back to the baseline. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's good. Wow. Yeah. That's that's a lot. <laughs> that's a lot. Never I'm, a dull moment. <laughs> no, but, you know, I hear you. So how have you managed this, you know, yourself? What do you do to cope? How have you gotten through, you know, whatever you'd like to share as far as any positive kind of takeaways? I mean, you've already really done a lot of that because just the fact that you're standing up straight is (laughs) a positive takeaway. Um, And the T is he's talking and the behavior is just, it seems like with the medical stuff, it's just really a lot. It's really a lot that a lot of people really don't have any concept of. The behavior I mean, I can only speak for me, but like, I understand her behaviors aren't, have, at times have been, but at least currently with her, her current size, which is all, always an issue, not as bad as what some people deal with. I mean, you've dealt with it enough to know what could be. I mean, she's definitely hit me and bit me and all of that, right? Mm-hmm. Like, we've been there. Yeah. The cussing and the kicking and the throwing things, but it doesn't happen nearly as often as it does for some people, and I'm definitely grateful for that. Yeah. When it yeah. has happened, or just even with her medical stuff, the biggest stressor for me has always been dealing with the world around, right? Yeah. Whether that be the judgment of people. And early on when she was little and really throwing these, I just had to learn to like put your head down and down, <laughs> like focus, laser focus on my daughter. Absolutely. And completely ignore all the people staring around at me. And I had to do that because if I even looked at them, it would just, I'd be bawling. Now I'm less concerned with what they think. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, okay, people are going to think what they're going to think. Right. They don't know my life and whatever. And it's not even like full judgment towards them. It's just like, they don't know. And okay, you know, I, I'm just, it bothers me less now. But it's still a concern of like having to navigate. There are all of these complex systems set up to help our kids for which I'm grateful, mm-hmm. but navigating those oh. can be a full-time job. Oh, I know. <laughs> and right? it doesn't like, get any easier when they get, well, yeah, I don't want to scare you, but I, I will say that oh, when yeah. they get <laughs> over 18 and then when they turn right. 21, a lot of the supports right. that are there in the pediatric um, world just kind Not of, fair. all of a sudden you're like, oh my gosh, what is the right. future look like for my kid? And right. you're doing it, and as you know, you're, you're steering the bus. You're the one figuring it out. And like yeah. you say, they're wonderful, but you know, you're the hub. So you're the one that has to integrate all the communication from schools and doctors and therapists and whatnot. Medicaid. Yes. 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 We have that too. Yeah, exactly. And that Um, is terrifying. I mean, there's been times that, you know, you'll get a letter from Medicaid or something and there's some snafu and I've gotten one that says we're going to cancel your, your, yes. Yes. Nothing like a it's little an instant, um, like adrenaline PTSD. rush. Yeah. That, like, yeah, you're constantly having this adrenaline shoot off and you're Absolutely. constantly having to then, and then come back down. And in the end of 2013, well, no, the end of 2012 into 2013, her dad and I got divorced mm-hmm. and it was also the same year that she had her brain surgeries. And so it was just a lot <laughs> wow. happening all at once. Yeah, a lot and of chronic in 2014, stress. 2014, and obviously I'd already done chronic stress just with her seizures well, yeah. and her diagnosis leading up to that, but that year in particular was just pure insanity. And it all happened in the same year. And so then by early 2014, I, and I'm kind of, I'm, I'm a perfectionist, 
mm-hmm. and I will run myself into the ground trying to do everything. Mm-hmm. And, you know, she wasn't, again, I had her going to therapy. I had her in all these things, but it wasn't like I ever got a break. Once her dad and I split up, I would get a bit of a break when they would go to their dad's house. But mm-hmm. at that point, because of her age, that caused me anxiety as well because she was still nursing at that point. Mm-hmm. Just having her not around me caused its own stress for me. I get that. This unknown. You don't know. You can't see your child, and you don't know what's happening. And right. who's and going to be there that doesn't have the knowledge that you have to help? Or if she has a seizure, then what right. can, you know, like if someone else is watching her. I mean, I just, all of these fears ran through my head. So that early on was a big stressor for me, even when I had a break from the kids. But even when I did have a break, I was still managing, like you said, I was that hub, right? So even when I didn't have the kids themselves, I was still on the phone all day with SSI. I was on the phone all day with Medicaid. I was on the phone all day with hospitals. It wasn't a break. Yeah. It was not a break, really. And um, so I was dealing with all of that and basically running myself into the ground. Uh Uh-huh. So... In January 2014, I started having heart palpitations, and I ended up in the ER thinking I was having a heart attack oh. at 30 years old. Mm-hmm. And, of course, I got laughed out of there because they were like, you know, you're not obese. Um, your EKG looks fine. You have no family history of heart problems at any age. But you have no risk factors. You're not having a heart attack. Go home. Uh, um, yeah. And I was like, okay, but, That's you know. not really I helpful. Told, well, I knew something wasn't right. You're not right. supposed to feel your heart doing something. <laughs> like if you're not running, you're not supposed to yeah. feel your heart in your chest. No. And uh, I knew something wasn't right. And so then I, through a long process, I ended up having hormones tested. I found out that I was almost in adrenal crisis. I had almost zero cortisol in my body. Not surprising. Um, it was, and that lack of cortisol was sending me into uh, early perimenopause at 30 years old because it was pulling from all of my other hormones to provide wow. cortisol that my body was, my adrenals weren't producing. Mm-hmm. And um, I was having PTSD symptoms and yep. all of these things that were happening with my adrenals shutting down. And That's so scary. I had to like get very, very disciplined about self-care. I, I started watching my diet. I started doing adrenal supporting herbs. I started, uh-huh. like, there were various different supplements I was doing. I started with hypnosis. I started with yoga, uh-huh. um, all of these things that I never wanted to do because <laughs> it meant having to stop. Yes. To yes. to sit and not be doing something. Right. And That's hard. Not I, I can being relate. Productive. Yeah. Right. Because be. I was like, I have to do these things, and if I don't do these things, everything's going to fall apart. Right. My kid's going to die and, if I don't just keep going and do all these right. things. Right. Yeah. And there's a never-ending to buy things to have to do. Oh, yeah. And I just realized at a certain point, like, okay, there's all these things you have to do, but do you want to die and leave your kids without you to navigate Uh, these things at all? Yeah. Because this is going to kill you. (laughs) Yeah. If you don't do something. And, you know, during that time, I gained 30 pounds without having changed any of my dieting or exercise habits just because my hormones were so off. Uh Uh-huh. And I had all these other issues. And so... Over a period of a couple of years of diet, supplementation, therapies, rest, yoga, all of these things that I did, I was able to get those numbers back into a normal range. I was able uh-huh. to stop the heart palpitations and a lot of the more severe anxiety attacks I was having at that time. And it's work through really some of not that. surprising, and, you know, hearing your story and something like that didn't happen. I, I would be more surprised. Oh, yeah. Well, now, in hindsight, absolutely. But at the time, I was oh, like, you don't, you no, can't see I can you do can't everything. Of course I can do everything. Like, I'm oh, I'm yeah. fine. And um, I had kind of become, that's something I've been realizing lately as I've been kind of working through my own emotions of everything over the past, her entire life, uh, who was, and it was a survival tactic, and I had to do it in the moment, but I yep. kind of become a robot. Yeah. And... I remember when she was having her surgeries and I was in Alabama and my best friend had come to visit us in the hospital. And I remember her looking at me at one point and saying, go back to the hotel and sleep. I'll watch her. And I was like, but I'm not tired. She's mm-hmm. like, I'm looking at you. You need to sleep. And I truly did not feel tired. I didn't feel anything. Mm-hmm. I was just on an autopilot. You're on a go. Yeah. <laughs> totally disconnected from my emotions, what my body needed, uh-huh. any input whatsoever other than just keep going and doing what you have to do yeah. and no regard for yourself. Yep. 
that definitely took its toll. And so now um, I do have 